All right, hey guys, it's Dr. Dan. I have one more video for you, uh, just getting started with Autodesk Fusion 360 for electronics design. Um, so this is not necessarily required for class because I already made the library of all the parts you're gonna need for class. But like if you're gonna go on with Fusion 360 and circuits design, this is something that will come in useful and that is just kind of using and accessing libraries and as well as like models um, because not everything you need is going to be already done for you, right? And so, like, when I put together this uh, parts library for you guys, that took some work. And I did that so you guys wouldn't have to do it. But I'd also like for you guys to be able to do that, too. I just don't think we had as much time in class. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk you through that. So, um, so I'm going to go to File. So I could make a new electronics library, right? This is how I did it. I made a new electronics library. But instead of making a new one, I'm just going to open the one I have. Okay, the important thing about libraries, right? There are basically four different things going on. There are devices, okay? There are symbols, there are footprints, and there are packages. Okay, devices contain symbols, footprints, and packages, basically. So if I like open my uh, CR2032 battery device that I made, okay, it has a symbol over here, which is what shows up on the schematic. It has a footprint which is what you put onto the PCB, right? And then with that footprint, it also has like this package, which includes like the pin connections and the 3D model that I have over here. Okay, and so that is uh, in essence, so I can expand it and you can see it has this simple battery uh, symbol and it has this CR2032 holder footprint um, and, and the 3D model, right? So that's, that's and the package, right? So that's, that's what's going on here. So, so if you ever wanted to add a new package, that's kind of what you would do. Um, usually you can start by making a symbol, um, making a footprint, and then you like make a device out of those things. Um, a lot of times when I was doing this, I was just copying from other places, right? So I would say, create a new device. I would import it from someplace else, right? So I'd already try to find something. So like for my battery, I imported this voltage source, right? And then I modified the voltage source, right? Remember, they had a different look. Um, if we look at the voltage source, right, it had a different symbol. So what I did is I imported the voltage source, renamed it to CR2032 battery, changed the symbol, gave it a, um, a package here with a footprint uh, and a model, and then I was able to basically make something that looked more like a battery, but still behaved uh, in the in the spice simulation as a voltage source. So that's how I did that. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of walk you through uh, maybe another example. So one of the things that we use in class is this AD620 instrumentation amp, right? Um, and so we don't have an AD620 instrumentation amp yet. I didn't add that yet to here. So let's go ahead. We want to create a new device. I want to import it. Um, and so I need to go to Library Manager. And um, what you'll find is we don't have AD620 anywhere in our Library Manager. It's a little bit sad, right? That means there is no current uh, device out there. Um, so I could go to the internet and I could do a search, right? And so this is what I did just previously. I did AD 620 Eagle Library, right? That's, I want to see if I can find that. And so it brings me to this libraries page. And sure enough, there's an AD 620 Eagle Library, right? So I'm going to go ahead and download that. I'm going to go back to my library manager and I can browse for that library. It's in my downloads directory. I can open it. And so it puts it there in the available. And now I want to put it in use. So I'm going to say use. Right now I have AD620 in use, so that's good. Okay, so now I want to import that AD620. I can just select it, right? It's already got a, um, a footprint for me. It's already got a, a symbol for me, so I can say okay. What it doesn't have is it doesn't have a 3D model, so I'm a little disappointed about that. It does have this package associated with it, this DIL8. Um, so that's dual inline eight pin package, right? Which should be the same package as we have for our op amp. But it's a little bit different, right? Like I click on my op amp uh, and you can see the 
the footprint's a little bit different than this footprint. You know, at this point, I'm thinking, well, I'd like to have a 3D model for it. Maybe I can just replace this package instead of this DIL8 package. I want to replace it with the DIL08 package. And so you could do that, right? So I'm going to select this. Um, and then over here in your packages, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this one. And I'm going to add a new one. Uh, and here's this dual eight. And so this is available to me because I already have this uh, op amp part. Um, one of the things that happens is you have a similar part and you know, you can use the same package. Uh, a lot of times you might have to like uh, import it from some other part in the library as well. Um, and so this, this is pretty easy for me to do because it already belongs to the op amp, right? So I get this package. I'm a little concerned because it looks like my thing has rotated. I don't know why that is. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna actually edit the package and look at this. Footprint of this package is modified. Okay, I'm not sure what that means, but let's look at this. Okay, so I'm concerned that these things don't match up. Like you can see the footprint uh, doesn't match up with the the 3D model. So that's a bad thing. Um, I, you know, I'm just gonna try to rotate the 3D model. I'm not sure what happened, but I'm glad it did so I can show you that we can we can fix it. Um, so I'm going to get rid of the sketch, select the 3D model, and I want to rotate this. And there's a way to rotate this under modify, I think. Oh, there it is. Uh, rotate. And so select the axis. I want to rotate it around. Okay, it's gonna be the Z axis. So I select the Z axis and select the angle. I think it's 90 degrees here. Okay. Okay, let me show my sketch again. Okay, I think we're back. We're back to normal. Uh, but so you can see what happens, right? Like you can edit these things so it works. I'm not, again, I'm not sure why that happened, but I'm kind of glad it did so you guys can see that. So I'm back at my parts library. Okay, and and we have a, it it's actually looks correct now. Okay, and the other thing that's going on is there's this, uh, because I made this new package, what it didn't do is it didn't connect the pins to the output. So I'm gonna hit connect, right? And now this is where I have uh, some, where I have to do some connecting, right? So this is um, the positive end, the negative end, the output, our reference and these resistor RG, right? And so if you guys remember, the resistor goes from pin one. So I'm gonna select RG from pin one and hit connect to pin eight. So I'll hit connect. The positive uh, power came in through pin seven. So I'll hit connect. The negative power comes in through pin four. So I select those two, hit connect. Um, the reference was pin six, I hit connect. Sorry, I'm doing, no, the reference was pin five. I am wrong about that, so I can hit disconnect. The reference is pin five, connect. The output was pin six, connect. And then we had the positive and minus uh, inputs. Okay, and the positive is three and the minus is two, right? So I'll hit connect on that, minus two, connect. Right, so we got all our pins hooked up, how they're supposed to be, okay? And now it's that, uh, it's a check mark. So we've hooked everything up. It's working great, right? I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And now we have uh, this part in part of our library. Okay, a couple other resources I wanted to show you before we get done with this is that you can also find models online uh, elsewhere too. And so like one thing is if you're on like DigiKey where you can basically buy any electronic component you want, right? Sometimes Let's just search for the AD620 again, right? Like, okay, there are many different versions of the AD620. I'm just gonna select this one. This is the one we use, the AD620AN. Um, it's from Analog Devices. Like, and it has these EDA CAD models, and it's at this website called Ultra Librarian. So I'm gonna click on that. 
And you can see here, it's got the symbol, the footprint, the 3D model of this device. I could download those and then import those into uh, my library if I wanted. You know, and if I was here just at Ultra Librarian and wanted to search for 8620, right? Yeah, you could see like all the versions they have of it. Um, and like, it's, imp it's important that like, okay, it, it tells you what models are available. Like it has the, the footprint and the 3D model and the, um, you know, and the symbol. Whereas like when you do some searching, sometimes these things won't be available. And so you can quickly see when you do a search, which are and which aren't available. So that's pretty useful. Uh, the other thing is that, um, you know, when we're doing our modeling, so we might did our, our simulation, right? We don't have a uh, model, a spice model for the 8620. So you can find that online too. If I just type in 8626 spice model, hopefully that returns something appropriate. Right, I can go right here. This is the analog devices website. It just, there's this place where you can download the spice model and you get it. The CIR uh, name is, is not useful. I don't know what it means, but basically it's a text file. So you just have to rename it to MDL. I actually already did that right there. So I would like, I'm gonna delete this one. I'm gonna rename this .cir to MDL. And now when I try to run a spice simulation, I can import this file as the model for that sub circuit. So you'd select sub circuit and you could load that spice model, right? And so it's just a, it's just a text file that defines um, stuff about that, that op amp, or this is a instrumentation amp, right? So there's a lot of cool resources out there online uh, that you can use to make awesome circuits in Fusion 360. So I just wanted to expose you guys to that.